Hello, everyone. This is Rick with the Cyber Pro Podcast, where industry leaders share their insights. It's about five questions in nine minutes. And today, we have a, a, an adjacent conversation to our cyber conversations, really focused on workforce and talent and all that cool stuff that we know is a big problem in our industry. So let's kick it off. Adrian, first question, who are you and what do you do? Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, I would want to say first, you know, Rick, thanks for having me. Um, we're really happy to be here. Um, so I am the CEO of TechBert. Uh, uh, you know, we are a uh, IT consulting uh, staff augmentation uh, firm based down here in Miami, Florida. Um, what we do is uh, we help deliver technology solutions to our clients. Um, yeah, I believe it's the key to, you know, any successful business uh, is the ability to harness both technology and talent. Uh, and that's what we do at TechBert. Uh, we do that and we work uh, with our clients to ensure them that they are improving their technology and maximizing their efficiency and, and improving their customer experience. Founded the company back in 2009. Um, very proud of, of what we built. Um, you know, we have a proven track record of delivering innovative, customized technical solutions uh, in IT and software and, and, and cybersecurity. Uh, you know, we are a small business. Uh, we find that, um, you know, one of our greatest strengths is being a profit oriented, uh, company. Um, and that helps us uh, be able to be successful in delivering solutions to our clients. Nice. You, I'm going to throw a bonus question because you talked about it. You know, when, when you use the term profit oriented, you know, really, really kind of explain why that, that really sets a small business up for success. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, for us, success is kind of, you know, you know, having a repeatable process, you know, um, and, you know, being able to, uh, you know, to have consistency in how we, uh, deliver, deliver solutions. And so, you know, maybe it's my back background in engineering, uh, but, you know, um, when we started the company, I want to make, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, how we, how we will deli deliver solutions and operate our business and very process oriented. Um, and, you know, I think it's very important, um, uh, to be, to be able to, to, to be successful. Uh, you know, we are also, um, kind of, uh, in the process of getting out for our CNMI, uh, debt three certification, uh, for project delivery. Um, and you know, when we kind of started going through it, through the pro through, through that, uh, and our experience, uh, with that now, cause you know, again, we're in it is find that we, you know, we do a lot of those things, a lot of those things that, you know, um, when you kind of follow that model, um, you know, I guess everyone's experience is different, but we found that, you know, we, we were doing a lot of those things um, at our organization. So, um, you know, that's, that's something that, um, you know, I'm very proud of um, that we do here at Viper, the process oriented. Nice. That's awesome. So I know that you guys also do a lot of, you know, workforce augmentation. And I'm curious, you know, what are the challenges that you're seeing in, in finding that talent in the IT, the cyber, the technology spaces today? Yeah. So, um, so, you know, there, there's probably a lot, uh, too much here to go over on uh, the time that we asked today, but I'll, I'll try to, um, you know, the, you know, obviously, you know, technology and technology related, uh, jobs are, in, are, are, are in demand, you know? Uh, and so, um, you know, even before the pandemic, there was, uh, in, in, in the profession, uh, you know, people were used to working from home. Um, and, and having that, um, have, having that kind of environment, you know, and so, you know, when, when, when the work from home started, you know, during the pandemic, you know, a lot of, a lot of companies were used, used to it, a lot of tech companies, service companies and, and tech professionals are used to it. Um, so, you know, now you have kind of companies that are, are wanting to kind of bring that back and get people back in the office and, you know, that there's a little collision there, um, with people, what, you know, people in the younger, younger generation. I'm wanting the experience of, of, of working from home, from home. And it's not just a generational thing. I mean, you know, have, you know, people, uh, you know, not just, you know, gen here, but, you know, the, you know, millennials, all, all the other gen generations, right. They, 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 they want to be able to, to have, uh, they've gotten used to that, you know, to that environment. So you know, one of the challenges you see is to try to, trying to, um, you know, um, uh, find kind of that middle ground between what employers want and, and what the talent and what people want. Right. Um, so, you know, you'll see now that, you know, a lot of hybrid type of, of um, you know, of, of arrangements where they work from home, come into the office and, um, and that could work specifically if the talent pool is, is in the same, in the same area or willing to move to that area. Um, 
Um, but I think, you know, on, uh, on the tech side, we're, we're, see, we're we see more, you know, work from home still being, you know, still being uh, uh, um, common. Um, but that's one area of, uh, of challenge. It, it's just to, to align those expectations with what work from home means now and for, um, you know, both for, for, for people uh, and, and for employers. Um, at least, uh, you know, uh, upskilling um, and uh, is, and reskilling is, is something that, you know, we, um, I think is important, you know, um, and, and often in, in, in the industry, in the cyber industry, you getting those certifications being trained. Um, that's very important. So it would be for people that are entering the field. Um, so um, there's not enough um, cyber professionals uh, with, I think, what the demand is now and, and what is what, and what we expect it to be. Um, so, you know, getting more people trained and, and, and getting them skilled and, and getting experience, uh, that's something that, that, that will be challenged. That is, uh, it's challenging and, and will continue to be challenged. Thank you for that. So you're an author. You authored the book, The Future of the Workforce is Now. Tell us about that. You know, what made you want to write it? You know, what's it about? What, uh, what were some of your, you know, kind of, without giving too much away so people actually read it, you know, what was kind of the key, key points? Yeah, so, uh, um, I, you know, we were just, uh, I was writing articles and creating content, um, you know, and putting that out through our website, communicating that, you know, through our newsletter with our clients. Um, and we got the idea that one day, like, hey, why don't we, you know, all the content that we're putting out there, why don't we put it all together, you know, and create a book out of it, right? Ebook, right? Something that we can distribute easily that, that you can kind of print out and, and, or, you know, you can order it and get a, you know, paper book, or even download the audio book and, and, and read it and, and kind of just kind of understand where the workforce, work, workforce is going, you know? Um, as I mentioned before, you, for technology professionals, software developers, for example, uh, you know, working from home before the pandemic was common, right? So, you know, we've kind of, you know, been in that, you know, been in that uh, environment where, you know, we're managing a workforce that's distributed and, um, and working from home. So how, how, you know, we see that as, as being kind of the future of, of where we're going. So how, how do those companies, you know, how do they, uh, you know, how do they you know, work with that, right? How do they deal with that changing landscape? Um, and we wrote a lot about that, you know. Um, also, you know, technology and innovation is something that, you know, is, is changing the, the, the workforce we, and, and companies, right? So, so that there's a big thing there on disruption, innovation, and, and, and how that plays into, you know, how the workforce is changing, right? You know, we don't physically need to be in office every single day, right? We're being much more efficient, um, you know, by using, uh, you know, by uh, technology a, a, in our, in our, in our daily work. Um, and obviously there's a whole nother area now here with, with, you know, potential impact of AI automation and what that means. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll start writing a little bit about that too, and maybe there'll be another book in the future, but for right now, it's, you know, uh, that was, I think one is good for, uh, for, for, for me and, you know, um, but who knows. That's awesome. No, I appreciate that. Adrian, I'd love to ask, you know, a fun question for you. What's your favorite piece of retro technology that just makes you smile? Uh, so I would say Nintendo, uh, old school Nintendo, like uh, 8 bit, 64 bit. You know, uh, I, I, I was a little kid that played Super Mario Brothers on, on the 8 bit Nintendo, and uh, the 64 bit uh, GoldenEye was like my go to game, you know, out uh, in college. You know, so my son's in. And those switch and you know we play mario kart together so um i actually recently picked up a nintendo 64 and got uh got the golden eye game yeah you know, i think i might get an 8-bit uh uh in the future so we'll see awesome adrian thank you so much for being on the podcast yeah no uh, it was a pleasure rick you know awesome love to let's keep chatting with you in the future Thank you for watching the CyberPro Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on new podcasts and bonus content.